going down from the harbor. We'll zoom it in here. Okay. This is along the new bridge here, downtown. It's a little chilly out here. Danny Lamentia is driving, and I'm taking pictures. Okay, a little faster, Danny. A little faster. Okay. I'm going to give you a tour of the lakefront plant today. 25 years after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and the day before Thanksgiving, and approximately 30 days before I lose my job, along with everybody else. But the fight's not over with yet. Over there we see building 160. Then we go around, there's the Gilman down there. I'm gonna go inside, that's the tracks. We do everything. 20 years from now, we're gonna know how we made cars back here in 1988. That wall you see there with the stairs, that empty spot in front of it used to be Bodie Brothers, which burned down. Some say the French missed their mark. They're trying for the motors. That's downtown. What's left of it? Beautiful downtown business association really screwed that up. Okay, let's back it off here. There's building 175. We're going to take left here. We'll go down. There's the other side of 160. That's where they have the E dip, the bond to right. Sealer Dick. This building 180, the big one there, the little one is uh, the old safety shack. There's uh, 175, that's where all the suits. Behind them walls are the people that are responsible for us not making cars there anymore. There's the crossover between 180 on your left and 190 on your right. That's the trim area and the paint area. There's gate 203. We'll be going into the plant in a minute. Here's the outside of the plant. This is along, uh, I don't even know what avenue this is. This is uh, Fifth Avenue. Okay, we're gonna hang a left here. We're gonna come down. This is where we come in, where I usually come to work. I was down at the lakefront down in 84 or 85 when I got laid off the first time. There's gate 204. There's a camera right there. Probably focusing in on us and we're taking pictures of it and it's taking pictures of us. Oh, nice. Wave to the people. Hi. Okay, there's one of the docks. That's the paint dock. That's building 195. That's where the paint system is held. There's some more of the building. There's gate 205. and then inside of the plant. We're gonna go on the outside a little bit more. There's the construction. We're gonna go up on that roof and look down. And there's the mill. We'll be inside of the mill. They're running a few pieces of production for the Jefferson Avenue plant in there. The plant which I may be going to, I don't know. Okay, Danny, a little faster. Pick it up here, we'll come around the back of the plant. Here off to the side, right there used to be uh, the stadium where we played football. That's all gone now, they tore it down. There's the old house where we used to change. And I went to St. Joe's in 1967, class up. And there was the stadium and the stands. It's the Frita Cayunis off down here. Cayunis. There's beautiful Lake Michigan. That's where everybody went and came and parked. As you see, there's some people that still do that. Park along the lake and watch the submarine races. Okay, there's the gate going into the back of AMC, which is locked. We'll be around the back in a minute. We're gonna come around and get you a picture of the pier and everything from the back. But there's the lake. Let's see if I can zoom all the way in here. Maybe we can get a picture across the lake. It's a little shaky on this truck. We just come onto the stones. Okay. Like I said, that used to be the stadium. It's not there anymore. This is where they want to put the marina. 
our highly intelligent Downtown Businessmen's Association wants to build some houses. There's the Elks. Or is that the Eagles? I forget. That's the Eagles. Ballroom. We had some dances there when we were kids. And AMC's parking lot. And if you a little bit of downtown, back over to the motors. Back it up. Give you a little shot of the, the mill here. It's a big place. There used to be nothing but pigeon shit in there. Now we're building cars. At least the underbody and the frames and the, the, the sides of the car are built in there. We'll be going in there in a minute. in the back of the truck, by the way. Uh, AMC's truck. Uh, lakefront, Danny's driving. Okay, again, the back and the lake. Where's your car? Which one's yours? Yeah. Oh, back there. Yeah. Back there. Yeah. See a black concourt up there? Right behind it on the street is a little car with the roof rack on. That's mine. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. There we are, zooming in on it. Go right in the now? Yeah, take it in. There's Dave's car. There's the gate we're going to go in. Guards will probably stop us. I don't know if this is legal. I don't see why not. See why not at all. But there's American Motors, you can see it. This is all coming down. It's all gonna be torn down and they want to put the marina in here. A couple hundred boats slip, taking 5,500 jobs. And they're gonna replace us with that. Beautiful. Pure brilliance. Pure brilliance. Okay, we're taking it in. There's the guard check. Wave to the folks. Hi there. What's happening, guys? I Smile. Am. You're on camera. Want to go down past me? It's down to 160. Uh, I don't know. Let's see where we're going to go from here. Go, go around the back. Go down uh, by it back as far as you can. Down on the other side of the mill. Yeah. There we go. Now these building numbers that I'm going to be giving you, supposedly, they are the, the, the numbers when the buildings were built. This is 138 right here. This is where we have a little office right on the other side of that uh, orange, orange door there. That's the construction office. There's the old, uh, there's the maintenance station right there. That's where the master mechanics hang out over there on your right. We're coming up to the uh, maintenance area. That's where uh, everybody in maintenance has their office but me. <laughs> Never did have an office the whole time I was down here. Here's the uh, inside of the mill. That's the crossover they built down there. And there's the powerhouse. There's Greg Olson's office back there. He's going to figure out what we're doing here shortly. There's the old powerhouse. There's a crossover they built. This goes down through building 201 and out to the Gilman, which we will be inside of shortly. Hopefully, because I'm freezing my little buns off here. Now we're on the inside of the plant. We are uh, looking east to the lake and panning south. This is the, in the other side of the mill. This would be the uh, north side looking south of the mill. That was all pigeon shit at one time, and I had the illustrious job of cleaning it. Me and uh, about 10 of my people. There's all the trailers, cozy trucks for scrap. Now we're coming around here, coming up to the lake. Okay, the old guard shack. Okay.
Here's the piers, North and South Pier. The uh, North Pier, which I fished off of when I was a boy, one with the red tower there. Beacon light, and then back. And this was the road that me and Bob Bernanke took down to the docks when we worked on the docks. Things are a little different then, as they will be 20 years from now. But that was approximately 20 years ago. Okay, this is all new here. They put this in the last uh, couple years. This little enclosure here. That's where we get our uh, parts from. And they're all assembled. We start off in there in the mill, like I said. It goes down through there and up and over to the crossover. And all along there. Okay, now we're going to be traveling east. Going back into the plant, which we never left, really. I mean, uh, we left it, but it's all been fenced in. Okay, we're going to come back up. We're going to park the truck. And we're going to go inside. Probably start down by the Gilman area where the robots are. Unfortunately, the robots aren't running. Everybody's off for vacation, Thanksgiving and the such. But I'll try to keep you informed. There's all our barrels, toxic waste and chemicals. There we go. This is 201 here. So we have one of our trips for 22s down here. Truck repairs right through that uh, door right there. This is an old uh, mattress factory. My grandfather worked here when it was Simmons and made beds. I believe my grandmother worked here. And uh, I don't know if my Uncle Joe did or not. But uh, a few of the islands have been here. What buildings made what, I can't tell you. Back then, but I can tell you now. That part right there, that's new. That's where the cars go. To the Gilman. Right there, and down. This is down here. This building 201 where I worked with the RWCs, resistance welders. There's one of the vats. There you see one of the boys bringing some stuff up. Yeah, we're actually out here, not much. Okay, this is back in the dock. There's the old Morelli uh, dock where uh, when the ships came in. There's a warehouse where we stored stuff. Bob Bernanke and I worked in there doing uh, powdered milk and sugar and, and uh, cut up hogs and shit. You can see the top up here. We're coming back around. I'm gonna get inside pretty soon because my fingers are numb. We're coming up uh, traveling from the northeast to the southwest. There's the back of the powerhouse, which was uh, my office. I was down here in 85 inside there. cleaned out by me too. This was all uh, shit back here as a matter of fact. There used to be another tower. There's only one standing there now but that's coming down. I don't know. If, I believe this is all contracted to uh, be torn down. There's the mill. I believe that's dock 26. I'm not sure. I get the docks confused down here. There's so many. There's Greg Olson's car. Coming in there's Olson's office. Let's see if we can get a zoom on that. I don't know if he can see me or not. He's probably wondering what the hell we're doing. Okay. What? Go that way. Ah, uh, no, let's park it. I'm freezing. Okay. We'll be going down there in a minute. So we're going to fade it off for now. Get the crossover at 190. And we'll bring you back in just a minute. That's Danny. Say hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. That's the, this is 138 we're in. We came in from the outside, Danny ate a pair, and I warmed up my hands. And that's the office, the construction office right there. Like I said, this is building 138. That's the orange door I was telling you about before. And as we pan down, we see all the uh, machinery used by millwrights and welders, cutting steel. There's the old carpenter shop there on the other side of the lockers. 
and a time clock, which we'll get down to in a minute. Right now, let's take a walk over this way. We'll start down by the Gilman. How's that sound, Daddy? Sounds good. Okay. We'll walk this down here. What I want you to try to just get the feel of going through American Motors with us. This is the, uh... Danny's a little bit more familiar down here than I am. I was down here in 85, and I just recently came down here last summer. There's one of Casey's bathrooms. <laughs> Dirty as ever. Yeah, Casey's one of my friends. Let's see here. Let's do... Let's go uh, this way. We'll go through. It might get a little dark, so i use my backlight. everything is okay and running through if there's any problems. It has to be add salt. And helps Danny. Add salt over there. That's over there. There we go. Okay, say goodbye. Goodbye. We'll be going out. Thanks, sir. Huh? Wow. 
body lift right there. Yeah. Here they go up. These are the control panels. This is what you see on the commercials. It looks like Detroit. Okay, again, this side of the robots. The cars go right in the middle. They're not there now. Because, like I said, this is Thanksgiving. There's the uh, main framer. Cars come down from toy tab there and are shuffled along through here. One of the main control panels. Oh, this is Alan Bradley. And there's the station where the maintenance people stay. Just as clean as ever, just like it always is, yeah. Nice and straight. The car, actually what's, uh, the sides are put on the door, or the, the uh, sides, the hood, the roof, and the uh, underbody are all welded on there. And they come around through there, and then they go through here, and your cowls and your, uh, the rest of your metal is welded on. And then, like I said, they go upstairs. What time is it there? Let's get a shot of that. This moment will never be again. Ten minutes after four on the 22nd of October, uh, November. 1988. You were there. Okay. Want to take it up to Toy Dam? Let's go. How we doing? Let's fade it out here. Wait a minute, let's get the... Uh, what does that say? Oh, okay, there's the time. Tuesday, November 22nd. See, he thought I was lying, huh? Uh, French propaganda when they're putting in those uh, light systems. Why do they have two down here? Nobody knows. Latest cycle time, 90 seconds. How sweet. Okay, let's fade out on that. lift that we just saw downstairs. That brings the cars up. And they're put onto this line right here. And they're taken around. These are the sides. And there you see a car. A horizon, I believe. It's on the conveyor. It goes around. And the wells are picked up and put together here. This is the toy cap system. Okay? Right through there. Kind of a neat little thing. And it'll come around the side here. Now we're coming to the start of the panel line. Here's uh, accumulator lines where all the cars are brought over here. And right here is where they're transferred. This is a fast transfer from here onto the panel line, which goes this way. Now here is the start of what Mr. Ford started, known as the assembly line. Here is where the people first start working on the cars, physical, physically manpower work on the cars. And we'll take this down the side. I can't explain every operation because I don't know it. They're welded. Certain parts are welded on, little pieces. Oh, I thought I lost it. Look at the ship barn and I'll fly it on the flight out in the barn. Well, we can make that. Here's some production offices here. Well, so these are all pretty much the same. Hang on a second, I got a call. Go ahead, Greg. Take care of all your uh and let them know that DI water uh, pump is ready in the tool room, ready to install. Greg, you buy a phone? Negative. You want me to pull them off that job that they're on over there in 160 and have them install the pump? Are they on the uh, bond right yet? 10-4. They're going to be there for a long time. 
If they perchance finish up at the Bonderite, then let them get at the, the uh, pump. Maybe, uh, how about the millwright? Can they uh, pick it up and deliver it? They're over there, too, doing the cutting for them. It's all a team effort type thing, Greg. You got four guys on this? Uh, five with the electrician. The old thing's go. 10-4. See if we don't get it over there. 10-4. Well, leave me alone, will you? Put that in there. Okay. So now it's going to get kind of dark over here. So we're going to... This is the panel line. Pretty much everything is welded up. Uh, the next shot I'll take you would be up by... Uh, let's see. What's what's the first booth, Danny? Forest Bank? Yeah. Well, we'll go through Edip first. Okay, we'll take it up through Edip and I'll pick up these cars. They look pretty much like this. Uh, only they'll have the doors on them. Maybe we can stop there and show you where they do that. Okay, we're going to fade it out. Right here. Say goodbye. This is where the cars are coming up. Now you see they have the doors on them already. These are the stations where the people work. Okay, this is uh, like uh, wire welders. That, uh, certain pieces are welded on the doors and uh, hinges and brackets and cowls. And this is where the cars I'm standing up on the line right here. You can see what the car looks like here. The hood's been put on. There's the inside of the car. Give you a back shot view here. There you go. I'm standing in the back of the car looking at the front and down the assembly line. What you have right here, where you see that right there, that's a, a ground. Make sure nobody gets electrocuted. The car will stay under that constantly while it's being welded. It's a precautionary method or uh, measure where uh, all the machines are grounded. Now, as you walk down the assembly line here, I'm on a platform, so I'm going to be coming down. Danny just turned on the lights for me. And we come all the way around here. Now, there's Danny's infamous car wash, which uh, has been the subject of much controversy over the uh, past several weeks. And if I could get Danny to go over there and stand by it, he'll give you his car wash smile. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love this car wash. You're Zoom. You, the only thing I see is your face in this whole thing right now. <laughs> that's terrible. <You're laughs> no, that's less. good. <laughs> that's man's about to be ready to retire. He's paid his dues. He's been here for 30 years. Going inside of the car wash. And on top of the third shift was working in here. Third shift was working here. We can tell that by looking at what? Must uh, be Playboy. The third shift was probably Playgirl. Who knows? Uh oh, what is that? A man taking pictures blindfolded. Look at that. That would have got washed. Okay, yeah. we're inside the car wash now. And uh, the line is turned. And now uh, it's going back down. There's a blow-off booth right there. All this, by the way, was built by maintenance. I don't want to blow anybody's horn, but we did do all this. And then they go back up now on the side here. Uh, let me mention a minute these 30-inch fans right here that you see here. Now you see them all over the plant. There's a couple of them going down the line there. There's one there. There's one there. I'm not even looking and I know they're around here. These fans cost approximately $154 a piece. Everybody in this plant must have two. We could retire and live very happily ever after on what the company has spent on these stupid things. And that's not to include other fans and blowers that this company has bought. For the production people. Uh, I'm trying to get everything in. I hope I don't miss nothing. I don't even know what building. We're in 133 right now on the uh, third floor, I believe. Now, the cars are going up there. I'm going to fade it out. I'm going to get you up by paint and show you the booths. So I'll say goodbye. I went. Just climbed up to the... Uh, what? Shipped on 160. We'll pick up 180 and 190. Here's what it looks like coming out of 160, sixth floor. Actually, seventh floor. There's Kenosha, ladies and gentlemen. Your illustrious town. Soon to be a ghost town, maybe. Now, right that puff of smoke right there. See that, Danny? Yeah. Out there, that's the power plant. That's where I live. Right there. Just below that. Let me zoom in on that. My house is right there. Now, this is a zoomed version of downtown. There's the bank. 
So my grandpa had WLIP, the radio talk show. Mostly all I can see is the tops of the buildings. There's the 195 American Motors, 175. Francisco's. Go ahead, you can talk. Shoot, shoot that off, boy. This is, this is the E-Dip. Here's the E-Dip. And those little partitions sticking out are the E-Dip zone houses. That's the same thing as ovens. That's what, that's what breaks the E-Dip on. Now, what you can do is line your guys. Okay, let me get off to the side. getting a little dark. I wanted to come up here. Can we go all the way to the end? Danny? Go ahead, Greg. Doing the same over in Trimmerham? What are you talking about, Greg? I missed it. All your uh, sealer guns, make sure they all get uh, fired once or twice over in the trim and paint. Got yeah, 10 for. How far down can we go here? All the way, all the way to 6th Avenue. Uh, all the way to the end of 1 to where Bodie Brothers was? Yeah, I looked right down on uh, Bodie Brothers parking lot. Old downtown Kenosha. And the burbs out there. Get up to the step here. Okay. There's 190 right there. Crossover right there. 190. Crossover 180. Okay. Right Here's where we just came from. We'll be out on the east side looking at the lake in a minute. 180 third floor right there is where I first came to work at American Motors as a supervisor on the third floor. Production supervisor. Okay. Let's take this up here. Step. Boop. Step. Missed that one. Another one here, Bill. I see it. Got it. Okay. Looks like the Great Wall. Okay, nice view. What a view, huh? There's uh, Holiday Inn, where Minnie, a maiden, has lost her way. There's our harbor. Let's get a nice shot of that. Okay. There's the barn where they store all the bodies, extra bodies. There's the barn, 204. Hopefully we can get in there. There's uh, Lake Michigan again. At the treatment plant. There's the water treatment plant. Brand new, had to do that. Cost a couple million dollars. Right there. I don't know if that's going to be torn down with the rest of it. We'll see. There's our harbor. Kenosha Harbor. There's where we were uh, over there before, but we couldn't get a good picture. So we came around here and we came across that new bridge right there. Now, this is where they do the fireworks, too. This is uh, Simmons Island, is out over that way right there. They used to have the fireworks there a couple years ago or last year. They, uh, our uh, councilmen, city townspeople, did such a good job of burning people up that they decided to do them out on a pier, which they should have done a long time ago, which they used to do a long time ago. And now everybody parks their keisters right there along that bridge. When I was a child, right about right there is where we stood, right in the middle. It was the old bridge then. This was all water underneath, too, at the time. It was all water back into here. Now we'll get up here. We'll give you a nice span here. There's the uh, where the mayor's office is right there, the building. Span around. All gonna be redeveloped after this place is torn down. Once you put that out, it's all gonna be redeveloped. It's all gonna be redone. Even this ladder right in front of me. There's K Town. My house is out there with Susie and the children's bank downtown. Here we are. Which way is your house, Danny? Right over to the church. Right over St. George's Church. St. George's Church is right there. 
I'm about a mile and a half north. There's St. George's. We are looking north by northwest. Beautiful old church. Now I got you on zoom and I'll take it around. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Some people walking down the street. Kenosha's finest. Speaking of Kenosha's finest, there is our local house of correction. There's the old one. The courthouse. That's the old police station. That's the one I remember, folks. <laughs> Having visited there several times, nothing serious. This is all going to be redone. They're planning all kinds of good garbage over there. Uh, hang on a second. Go ahead. Okay. Battery's running low, but here's the east side. We're up on the roof. Uh, I don't even know what building we're on. There's the piers. 134. And up in the sky, isn't that lovely? That's it, folks. That's as good as I can zoom in on the moon. Might as well be on the dark side with that one. Battery's running low. Let's do a quick span. I have another battery in the case. So we'll change the battery. This is the tops of all the buildings. A real interesting shot. Maybe someday we'll appreciate it a little bit more than we do now. We probably will. What, you, are you ducking, Danny? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Some of the tops of elevator shafts. Slide that shot over there with the orange door. Many of those buildings that stick up, remember the tops? Oh, yeah, the elevators. Yeah. With the motors and the gears and the drives up to the elevators. Yeah. These are all the uh, exhaust fans and your exhaust motors for everything in the building. There's a tower, don't look so tall now, being up here. Okay. Let me get a shot of you up here, get the wind. There you go, on top of the roof. Cute, huh? My cottage by the pond, it's leaving me. I'm like the Indian looking at the. Interstate, I got a tear running down my cheek. It's killing me. But it's yeah, he's good. retiring. He paid his dues already, folks. Say good night. Good night. Oh, good shot. It zoomed you all the way in the back. Good night, folks. Okay, come here. It's my turn. As soon as I take my finger off, it's going to be taken to the. And there's Wild Bill. There he is. Up here on top of AMC or Chrysler Motors or Renault, whatever you want to call it. Here we are, folks. It's soon ought to be torn down. I hope we get a picture of it being torn down. It's about uh, 30 degrees up here. Can you see anything? Is it taken? Oh, yeah. It's working beautiful. Good. Okay. Say goodbye. We're going to fade you out. Bye, everyone. From AMC. Down the steps. What you see there is 163rd. That means building 160, third floor. And this is the station where my maintenance people hang out. They see me in the mirror? Oh, okay, hi. This is the pipe fitter's shot. Now that takes us right into 180, third floor. And that's where I started as a production foreman in 1984. Okay, or 83, I'm sorry. This is where the people sit. This is the telephone. This is 160. You can see the cars there. I'll take you through the line and show you everything that's going on. Now, if the battery runs out on me here, that's okay. That's what I want it to do. There's uh, where the electrician sits. And my millwrights sit over here. And well, everybody sits here, reads the paper and bullshits. You got a radio on over there, which I think I'll turn off. Here's the station where they do all their work. Modine heater. The lockers. Okay, that's their toolboxes. All of these are to be carried out in... That's the old welding station around the corner there. Let me turn this radio off. Okay. Here. So here we are again. Okay, now this is the cars coming out of the first booth and the oven. That's called the uh, 
Edom, which is uh, sort of an electromagnetic type system that's set up and it coats the car. And you can see it's got a little bit more gloss on it than the last time we looked. Like I said, the cars are covered now because of Thanksgiving. And they go down the line, which we will go. Up here we have Danny's Plastic. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it can only be explained by Danny, so I'll let him explain it. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, this place leaks like a sieve, and wherever they have to have leaks, that's right over the line there. And it's right over the line, we're around the people, we got to get away, get, get, get the water away from them, or building it up, and that's where we get rid of it. And the supervisor up here, Mr. Upright, is constantly calling for Danny to come up and hang plastic. There's another one of Danny's little plastic hangs underneath the... Uh, Booth over there. Give it a zoom. Right there. So you can see how Danny twisted around the nuts up on top. And it looks pretty good. That'll last 20 something days, huh? We're ready for the model. Yeah. We're on 166th floor right now. And we're going to go down the line and take you through the different booths. Okay. This is the assembly line. Normally, there would be people all along here. You can see the tar paper on the ground. Daniel lays that too. People work all along this line. Seal cracks and crevices. You can see the plastic as we go through. It's hanging all over the place. Like Danny said, it's uh, like a seal. Like like right? like, this is what seals all the cracks and crevices in the... This is where they seal the stuff, the black stuff there all around the car. On the inside, all the ceiling. On top. Front, this is what the car, the car looks like without anything in it. Just bare metal. Okay. This is one section that stretches along here. A little uh, wimp of a supervisor takes care of this one. Of course, I've always learned that you be careful on what you say on these tapes. You never know who's going to be watching. Which has proven to be true in many an instance. Do a little dubbing, that's all. <laughs> You've probably seen a lot more than I'm talking about. Now, the line turns here, and it's going to go into the prime booth up there. Over here we have one of the maintenance stations. This is uh, 186th floor canteen area. You see the ARA machines, which will live in infamy in my mind. It's being the worst food in the world. Probably right up there with army food, airplane food, and the rest of it. Okay. Now, can we go into those booths and just kind of go all the way through? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You get one hand and move and slide through and go right up to the uh, color, which is the reserve. I want to get them in order. Go to the this is how a car is made. Who knows, maybe 20 years from now, it'll be a completely different system. Probably mostly automated. Much of what we have right now. Uh, maintenance foreman up here. Gets a little cut tight here.
that's the first table is right there. And we're coming back through here. There are all the controls for all the paints. Everything is sanded down and 
repainted and redone here. Again by robot. And there's the water system. You can see her flowing. Keeps it kind of uh, cool in here, but it does get warm at times. Cars come out of paint, and you'll see where they have uh, some color on them. After the cars come out, they're painted. And I didn't take you through the paint booths because they're all the same as you just saw. But these are the accumulator lines. You see the L bodies there? This is 195th floor. And they go all the way back. I don't even know if you can see as back as far as they go. I'll put a little two blocks, Danny says. Okay? Uh, there's an M body there. Black cherry colored car. I like that. All the way down. Then they're put on this transfer right here that I'm standing on. Okay? And they're put on these feeder lines right here. Broadcast stands right here, and the car is given a number, a build number. And they come around the corner. You can see the different colors of the cars. They come around the corner. There's a transfer right here, right there. Come all the way around. And now they're going down. This is the start of the trim line. It's called a pre-trim line. They'll be coming down to the fourth floor. At one time, on the fifth floor up here, there was the start of the trim line on the other end that I just showed you. And the cars ran the complete way down here. And uh, miscellaneous interior parts were put on and uh, headliner and such like that. Now I'm going to go downstairs and take the picture coming up, and we'll follow the trim line. A little bit, and Danny's going to explain something here that I missed. Okay, this, this is the transfer area. There's two people here that actually push these bodies. They call it trucking bodies. They actually do broadcast truck these bodies from here over to this conveyor over here, which is the start of the trim line. Now, just before Chrysler decided to close the doors on us, they were working on an automatic feeder system. Over there is the control panel for it. It would automatically pick out the right car. This is all computer, all computerized. This is like similar to the one they have at, uh, at the main plant. And there's the apparatus over there. Right. Instead of two bodies pulling these cars, that apparatus over there would come over here to the program, pick out the right body, slide it back on the strand area, and put it on the conveyor. And uh, when they decide to close the plant, they quit working on it. I don't know how far along they are, they must be far away because they never use it. They've gone back to Manpower. Yep. We have a similar operation at the main plant on the L body, which hopefully I can get up there and make a tape too, and it'll be on the back of this one. Okay, ready to go start the trim line? Let's go. Let's go build a car. Let's do it. There. And here is the start of the trim line. Right down this conveyor here. And there it takes off. Okay? And we do a 180 there. Different operations are now done here. Mostly the inner operations of the car, such as door locks and uh, things that go inside of the door, under the dash, uh, the clips are put in for a windshield. The car comes around there. Uh, certain fixtures are put on. Here's a broadcast system where the first place that the car is checked for its number and a build order is put on, right here. It comes out of the computer and it's read by the person at this station. The stock is kept over there. Uh, surprisingly enough, most of this is just the same as Mr. Henry Ford started his assembly line back in the early days. Now, the cars are supposed to follow a certain sequence, maybe a certain number of L bodies and a certain number of M bodies. Uh, the L body is easier to build than the uh, L body. The L body being more complex. You can see the, the door hinges are now being put on. Uh, straps and door locks on the inside of the car. You know, this is going to be the only probably complete, complete documentary of how a car is built from start to finish. Okay, now we're going to we're going to take this down down the line here, and you can see little pieces being put on the car. Here. Okay, see all of that? These are all inside the door and inside the car itself. Little pieces being put on. This happens to be an L body here. The Omni and Horizon are exactly the same body. Okay, Danny. Yeah, that helps. Okay, yeah. down on this side. This is uh, the fourth floor of 190. These are where the people stand on the side of the car and work. Over there we have sealer pumps. There's a lot of sealer put on before. There's a brake cable or clutch cable right there. Uh, pads, the insulation, the uh, 
fire wall is put in right there. You can see it put in right there up on the dash to avoid uh, engine fire coming into the uh, actual car compartment where the passengers sit. Now, as we walk down the line, it may get a little dark. Let me get this backlight on here. But this is what uh, the operation consists of. And as we go on, you can see other uh, grommets and uh, you can see the wires there coming through for the back of the uh, car. That would be the, uh, the heater or your rear window defogger. Just put in, all your wires are put in here. All your inner wiring, your uh, harnesses, all along here. There's a sealer here that's put on for the windshield, which has to be dry, by the way, and uh, it's put on later down the line where uh, they put the, another sealer on it. Hey, Danny, you with me? Let's come over to this side here. And uh, we're going to get in the back of one of these cars and take a look. Now you can see here the trunk rubber's been put on. You can see that on there. The wires are in. There's the wire harness reaching from the front to the back of the car. All the controls are in the front of the car. Okay. We'll bring that up for you right there. That's what your car looks like without the fascia and the dashboard, which we'll show you later that goes on. Just like that. You can see your door locks and your handles are all being put on. There's the end of the wire harness. That's for your tail lights, your rear window, def rear window defogger, any lights you have in the back, your blinkers on the back right here, which aren't in yet, but they will soon be. And this is how the car is dressed as we go along. Uh, your rubbers on the side are put on here, right here. He's right here. They pull off. They, they're put on with uh, uh, these right here. These are heated, okay, under lamps. Now, what they have here on these, on the bottom of these, if you look on the inside, okay, they have tiny little uh, glue particles. And when they're heated and put on, they burst. And when they melt together, they seal themselves. Such is the same on the trunk rubbers. Now here's one of the lights for the trunk rubbers. See, as you can see, it gets up to about 120 degrees. They have two sets of uh, stacks here. They get hot. And like I said, these little glue particles are inside the rubber itself. When it's put on, they use a hammer and they smash it on. You get some lights up there, Danny? And, uh, as uh, they cool, they seal themselves, and the trunk rubber stays on for a long time. Now, mine and my Eagle is coming off, and I may be able to uh, appropriate one, as they say. Uh, Danny just hit the lights, and we'll take it down here. This is the, like I said, the canteen is right over here, where the people go for their break or whatever. 194th floor. It's done by bays. You can see the, all, all of this, by the way, is put in by maintenance. Everything you see, this whole line, the lights, you can notice the fans, okay? Uh, all these racks are put in by the tenors and carpenters do their work. Then the millwrights and, of course, and the welders do the chain and the conveyor. The pipe fitters do the air up there on the side. Uh, we have a main air feed, about 80 pounds, coming along. Uh, this is a, what they call a repair station. Now, every section has a repair station. It has a man or two at the end of the section or in the middle of the section depending on the number of people that uh, the, uh, are intelligent IEs, which never spent a, a minute on the line, tell us we can do more and they can do more. IEs are not very popular people, neither with supervision nor with the hourly. Now here you see the windows are being put in. Now here are the windows being made up on the other side by an individual, brought over to the line and being put in the car with the roll mechanism and the whole thing. You can get in this, Danny. <laughs> okay, now you can see the rubber's being put on right here. Windows are being installed. Okay. Now we're coming on down here. Now this is going to take us down to 182nd floor. We are in 180 now. 180 and 190 are connected by the crossover that I showed you earlier. Now we're going to take this downstairs. I'll take you over here by, uh, it's a little dark. But the cars go around here. This is where they fit the doors, right here, right in this area on this curve. Doors are hammered and, and bent and fitted. And you would be surprised if you've seen what they do to some of these doors up here. Uh, 
A guy by the name of Chuck Anderson works up here on first shift. Now the cars go right down there and you can't see it, but they go right into that, right down there, and that's a shot going downstairs, which I will shine up for you. Here's another repair station, by the way. Okay, so we'll take it downstairs on the fourth floor. Now actually, I don't know who designed this, but they come down to 182nd floor instead of the third floor. The third floor would be the last floor that they go on before they're shipped out. Now they come down this incline, and you can see the windows are in, and they start being put together. All of the internal work of the car. Now we got uh, your uh, master cylinder and your brakes and uh, all kinds of your under the hood connections where the engine would go. They come along here, they do 180 or 360, come around, down along here. Okay, right here. More internal. Here is where the eye panels come up. Instrument panels are dashboards as they were once called. They come up on a conveyor from 161st floor. That's them coming out. They're taking off right here. You can see that one there. There's a limit switch right there that tells if there's an eye panel on, it'll automatically trip and it'll stop this conveyor system right here. Okay? If there's no eye panel on that, the conveyor will continue on. A man takes the eye panels off, and there's one partially installed. As you can see, there are connections to be made underneath, which they do, one man on each side. They sit right in the car and put your dashboard in, or eye panel as they are now called. There's a nice view of it. Okay, then it comes along, more operations are done. Uh, ducts are put in for your uh, air conditioning and for your heat. The eye panel is now installed, complete. There are some minor adjustments that have to be done. You can see the wires, some plenums are being put on all around. Here's the backlight goes in, right there. There's the makeup where they're sealed and put on right there. Okay, they're stored there. And depending on the broadcast, whatever it is, the person will read the broadcast, which is on the car. It's on every car on each side, all over the place. If it calls for a certain type of windshield, there it is, heated, as they go down the line. Okay. Then some more uh, fire protection, another maintenance or uh, maintenance or repair. Here's where the tail lights get put on. Now they're put on and secured with this press right here. This is a taillight press hung on some air balancers and the operators on both sides will pick this up and puncture or push the uh, taillights into the car with some rubber backing on the foam and, and foam on the inside. Now there's two sets. One's the main and one's the backup in case one goes down. We have one, of course, to take its place. Both systems are working at all times due to the fabulous and fantastic maintenance crew that uh, is in charge of this. And this happens to be me and my people. Now, uh, <clears throat> as of 194th floor when we started the trim line, that's where me and my people take over, my maintenance people. And we keep this line running on these floors where Steve has paint and the such. Okay? And then we go down there and I'll be right back with you. This is where we put on the windshields. Now you can see that they're made up right there and they're made up on the other side over there. Everything has a backup system, everything. They're covered now. These, uh, again, they read the broadcast on the side of the car and that would tell the operator if it takes uh, winted or tinted, I mean winted, Phew. hello Bill. Tinted window and there's the code right there, okay? And you can see that that's put on. And right here is the press that seals. There's a sealer that's put on just before that. I don't know if you can see it. It goes right underneath the windshield here, right along here. And it's a gooey type stuff. And when the press gets to it, it presses it down and seals it. And then you have a few other operations here on the door where it's sprayed. Uh, you see this door right here doesn't have the spray on it. The next door does, okay? Here's a glue system, which reminds me I have to oil these glue pumps, okay? These are continuously circulating 24 hours a day so they don't stop and build up. The glue is always circulating, just recirculating itself all the way through. 
It then comes around, it gets a little dark over there and you can't see. And it comes around here. And it comes up here. And what you see there is the water test. Now the cars will go into that water test and be bombarded just like they were in a rainstorm. Just to see if there any water leaks in the car. It comes along here and goes into water test. Right there. Okay? Right there. You can see the nozzles and the hoses and it hits it from every angle. Every angle possible. And it goes through there and I'll show you on the other side here. A little interesting. Just before water test, here's an audit area where quality control takes. Now Danny's pointing to Kenosha L body, number one. Kenosha M body, number four. That gives you uh, the ranking. We're number one. No mistakes. You can see the audience next to it. Number one was 10. They had 22 or 32.5, I believe. Yeah, Jefferson right. Avenue, that's where the L body is going. Number 12. Now you tell me who thinks of quality and who doesn't think of quality and why they're moving this car. You can see the whole system as it works right here. These are all of the, uh, not all of the, but uh, several of the Chrysler plants. There's Bromalia. Toluca. Bromalia is number two. Right, that's, that's a completely automated plant. They don't completely even automated. Now we got, ours is not completely automated. As you see, it's mostly done by hourly people, yeah. and we're number one. St. Louis too is automated. St. Louis is, number, is automated. That's number three. And we got automation beat, well, as you can see, hands down. Okay, number one and number four. Out of all of those plants right there, we build the best Chrysler car, and they're taking our jobs. So you figure it out. I mean, out of water test. And there's uh, three or four operators right here that check the cars for leaks. They go through an infrared system right there and a black light system, and it shows any leaks, even if there is no water that you can visibly see. And then into a blow-off booth right there, which is extremely noisy. And we'll come to the other side. And this is the uh, other side of the blow-off booth, which drives the car off. Now uh, there we have some, uh, I believe that's the operator that works on the... Uh, line right here on this side of the uh, blow-up booth. Yes, this uh, local color. Uh, some of them do like to hang pictures of themselves. Uh, that must be a first shift girl. I don't remember seeing her on second. Of course, how could I forget? Now, the cars do come along. You'd see more being added onto the car here. Now, after water test goes down the line here, we're going to come into what uh, we're going to start putting the uh, uh, some more harnesses. You can see all the stock is on the side where the operator works. There's some sealer and some glue and some harnesses and exact same operation for the other side if it uh, deserves it. If not, there's another operation, some padding. It's put on right there. You can see that padding right there. It's put on right around the wheel well on both sides of the car. Okay? Now coming along here, we have your plastic is starting to go into the car here. Okay? Here's your carpet up here, where uh, it's punched out previously, Prima, right there, for the different uh, models and makes of the car, the L body and the M body, the different uh, plushness, if you will, of what kind of car or interior you want. The, uh, you choose it at the manufacturer's or the dealer, and then it comes along, and as you can see, there's half of it right there, it's put in. Okay, that's the front and back seat right here okay another back seat will go there this is obviously a stick shift okay coming along here there are uh, coke machines that's the drinking coke over there they do have other ones here which we won't talk about there's some speakers right there that they're put in a car Into, the, into wherever. The door, the insides of the doors are put on right there. You see that? The car's starting to take shape. It's shelving in the back here. This is an L body here. Most of these are L bodies because they're not making many M bodies anymore. This used to be phase old section when I was a production foreman. Now the cars will go back up to the third floor. Right there. And I'll give you a shot of Going up the ramp here, that's that right there, 
And here's the inside of the car, what we've seen so far. Nice dashboard. See that? The doors on the inside are done. The windows. You can see where the door handles and the window handles and ashtrays or whatever still need to be put on. You got your uh, A post up there and the B post. Okay. Seat belts are now in the car, some of them. All around. Starting to look like a car. Okay. We'll sign it off. Here, picture of the operator. She, uh, she must be the repair man or repair person here. This is a repair station. You can see uh, things, uh, operations that don't get uh, finished are, they come to the station and the operation is marked on the car. And here's all the operations in the section, by the way. Go back up on that. And the operator right there, that operator right there, I believe it would be. I can't catch her name. She must be a first shifter, too. <clears throat> they must uh, eat something different on first shift. But that's the uh, operator here, and she fixes it. Now we'll take you up to uh, 183rd, or 193rd first, up that ramp right there. Remember upstairs in paint when I showed you the water that was going down? Uh, pretty soon I'm going to take you down to the first floor, and I'll show you the paint sludge. Well, there it is going from the uh, third floor down to the third, and it'll go all the way down, and I'll show you what, uh, how we process that once we get down there. But just to show you, the system runs all the way from up, upstairs on the sixth uh, floor, through the fifth, fourth, third, second down to the first where we have big tanks and it's processed and I'll show you that operation when we get there. Production foreman. Danny's turning off the lights and we'll go upstairs to the third floor. That's the line. Okay. This is up the ramp. There's no operation done of course on the ramp safety purposes. Now we're coming into Hang on a second, it's not important. Now we're coming into 193rd floor. This was Vicky's section when I was a production foreman. You can see the headlights here. These are, I believe, halogens. I can check and make sure. Yeah, halogen. These are the best lights you can buy. They're put on the cars here. Everybody has an operation here. And if we take this down, Danny's trying to hide over there, but I got him. And we come along here. That's the other side of the operation there. And we're crossing the line. Uh, my throat's getting mighty dry. Okay, we're coming into another repair section right here. Okay. Now all the car doors are closed, but that's only because there's nobody here. There's operations, I'll show you the stack. All of this stuff is put in the car. He's not. All the way down the line. Right there is my son's Jeff's job. Right there, he puts the uh, Your son? Yeah, puts the condenser coil on. Oh, there you go. That's Danny's son's job. There's the 842 man, sneaking, uh, probably stealing those. <laughs> they use subs rather than fork trucks because the floors are so weak. Right. Okay. Uh, not right now. This, uh, there's another uh, there's a sludge water right there. Okay, you can see that in the operation. A lot of plastic will start going into the car now. And uh, the interior will start being built as we go along. Okay, we're going to come into the dock. I'm going to turn the lights off and then we'll go up a little farther. Well, of course, all different colors. These are the screws. Uh, everything is done mostly by air. Okay, these are put on with, and at the end of these hoses, which aren't there now, but they're guns certain pound torquage, 30, 50, 100 pounds of torque, and uh, what they have critical torque, of course, with the seat belts. Just a minute. So I'm going to move up to uh, Vicky's old section, and this you're about to see was my section. It started pretty close now. Well, actually, it started back there a little bit, where I put in seat belts for the X37s. Right here, here's, this should be the old seat conveyor right here. It's not now. Right along here. This was my, the start of my section. Right in here. You can see the car being put together. More stuff being put in the car. You can see there the difference now. All of that's done in the last couple sections. Right along through here. Used to be an old seat conveyor there. 
There are drives, uh, six drives, I believe, all out here. Used to be a desk right there. That was my desk. Right here. And that's where I sat. That was one of my desks. That was at the start of my section. This was the zooming section. All along and down through here. Right now they have Huntsville's up there. What I had was I had people, electrical checkers, that did all of this. We're now Huntsville electrical checkers. Do it. We'll give you a shot of that. Well, the car is pretty much built, except for the seats and stuff as we go down through here. Okay, I gotta stop and give uh, Greg a call in the office here. And we come along. This was all swinging section at one time. Everything went along here. I'll turn this off and we'll get along on the other side of it. Call. There. Let's go canteen. This is where I hung out on 183rd. Coffee. It was done in a French motif at the time. There we go. Let's see if there's a phone around here. Okay. Hang on. End of my site was the end of my section when I was a production boss. My desk was right about here. And I had a repair station right there where JC and John McRae worked for me. John McRae was killed on a motorcycle. But that was my desk right here. Not the one on the far side over there, but right here where all these harnesses are. This is now electrical check and repair, which it was then only it was done by people, and now it's done by machines. And down here was uh, the end of the line. But now they've extended it, and they've gone around the corner, and we'll take a walk over there. This was a repair station, too, when we were really rolling in 83, making a lot of cars. There were several repair stations. I had three, as a matter of fact, in my section alone. And uh, we come along down here. This was Lloyd uh, Young's section. He was uh, at the end of the line. and. Any final repairs that had to be done to the car. The car was built by this time. It was uh, built and ready to go. And then it was gone. It went straight. You can't see down there, but it went straight down and out. Now, since then, they have uh, come over here and cut the line over to there. And uh, we'll get some lights on over there. I don't know if we'll need them. Actually, there's no operation that's done here. There's no people that work here. It's just an extension of the line. And it comes across here. It might be getting a little dark for you. But uh, actually, where there's some operation up here, there's some light, I see. So we'll just walk it up there. OK. Now here, you can note that the seats come up from the cushion room. It's a whole different section down there. And that's the cushion room down there. The seats are made up. It's a whole other operation. They're put on this conveyor on the seat system here. And right here, they're put into the car. Now you can see one seat in the car right there. OK? And the rear seat is put in. They both come up here. This is one of the final operations of the car. These uh, safety guards that you see right there, those little black uh, rubber things on the fender, safety shields, so when the people bending over into the cars won't scratch them. They're supposed to not wear belt buckles or cover the belt buckles or whatever. No sharp tools in the pocket. And here, on the other side, if you can see it, is where the uh, name get put, gets put on Omni, Horizon, Dodge. Right there. Okay. It's a heat lamp right there, and it heats them up, and they get put on. They get cleaned off and put on. Uh, coming around the corner, there's no more operations until... There's your sign that says L-body seat and stuff. Front seat, but that actually, that's behind us. And then we come along here. This is uh, probably quite a fascinating thing to watch or follow through here. I was accidentally listening to some people talk, uh, you know, I was having lunch the other day, and they took a tour of the plant, and they had never been in an automotive plant. And they just, uh, were, that's all they talked about. They were absolutely amazed. And they didn't even get to see, uh, geez, half of the stuff that we're seeing right now. They were at the main plant, 
And again, the operations, the car is almost built. Uh, the wheels and everything else is put over at the main plant. The cars are shipped out of here. And then we're running into some dark area here. But this is the end of the line. The car is built. I get you up here with a little light. Now there's a police car. That's an embody. There's an embody in front of it. This is where the lines converge. The L body and the M body. The uh, M body is only painted here. The M body is put together in building 40 up at the main plant. Hopefully I can get you up there or we can get up there and see what's going on there. But here's where the cars come together. This is the L body or M body line and that's the L body line over there. Now they come along here. Now the M body is not built. It's just a shell of a car like you've seen before. There's nothing in it from front to back. It's just been painted, that's all. The car is totally trimmed out at the main plant in building 40. It's trucked to building 40, I think six of them at a time. Let's cut across here. Here's uh, part of the door line. As you can see, this conveyor system is very complex. The doors are sent along this line and put on back over in metal. And there's the accumulator line. All the cars are sent down those lines and they go out to the barn. And you can see they're mixed. There's a couple, there's a black Omni. Nice car. Little car. And brought down. There's the control panel right there. And they're all set on the accumulator lines where they go out to the barn. And that's about the end of it. That takes care of that system. Uh, I'll probably go down now. Uh, 160 and show you the eye panels, how they're made up. I also have a job down there that I better look up on, or look in on, before my guys think that I left them. I just got a call that production is going home out in the mill. So, Olsen will be going home. I am now acting superintendent, if you would. <laughs> I'm in charge of the lakefront plant. So I'm going to sign off now. We'll fade it out on the accumulator lines and open it again down to 160. Hope you enjoyed the tour so far. It's been fun for me. Okay, here we are on 161st floor. This is the time clock. 161st floor, canteen. This is where they make up the instrument panels, or IPs as they're known here. Well, you can see the speedometer and uh, the pieces that go on. Well, here's the conveyor system for the IP line. They're on hooks, and they travel around. And here you see the broadcast again. This is for a certain car. And the car has the number up there. And this is what they look like. And they're set on carriers. And again, like an assembly line, they go all the way around. I do believe they start over there and they come back around this way. Around through here. And travel this way. travel up this conveyor to where I showed you on 162nd floor. We were there previously or earlier and they get put on the car. And here's where they start. 
And as you can see, it's just a piece of plastic when it starts. There's nothing on it. Absolutely nothing. Even less on this one. This is a very raw IP or instrument panel or dashboard, however you want to look at it. Like I said, it travels along this line and people along the line, the assembly line, and before its finest, all the way down and around and then back up through there, up to 160. Now we're going to go to a place that's uh, referred to by many as uh, American Motors Little Hell. It's called a cushion room. It's where they put the seats together and they're put on a conveyor. There's the radio cage. The radios are kept in here under lock and key. There's the lock. We don't have a key to speak of anyway. And that's where they keep them. So we'll go over to uh, Little Hell now, the cushion room, and show you what's going on there. Okay. Here we are in the cushion room. This is where a lot of people get sent and a lot of people go to the nurse. Here you see the surprise. Those are the heat lamps for the covers right there. There's the cushions. This is where the seats get put together. You can see the uh, structure. And here's the start of the line. Right here. The seats get put on. They put together on the sub-assembly jobs off to the side there, where they put them together. Then the bottoms, now these are the tops right here, the backs. Again, for the car, you can see the sheet right here. For a particular car, the seats that are ordered. Down the line, the different colors. Certain operations, most of the operations are done off to the side. You can see there. Where they get pulled, the covers get pulled over the cushions. There's uh, what they call a puller, which never works. Mostly it's done by, by hand, by fingers. And there's a lot of people that have sore fingers. Brother Joe worked out here for a while. Coming around to the side. And down the line. Now, there they are. Now here's where the backs get put on. To the bottoms. You can see they're not connected there. They all get pulled off to the side here. Here's a sub-assembly conveyor. Goes down the side. And here is the air gun, or hose, without the gun, as they go down. There's your uh, headrest on a nice gravity feed conveyor. Coming down and they get put on, right there. In there, they're screwed on. There's your sub-assembly over there, your sub-conveyor. <coughs> Excuse me. And down the line they go. Now, here's your, uh, these are your uh, uh, levers for pushing the seat back and forward, or your tilt and forward or whatever, depending on the type of seat you have. Your plastic, it all gets put on the side, right there. <coughs> there you see one without it, and there you see one with it. Very simple. Here's your rear seat, your cushion, right there. Okay, those the two are made off to the side. <coughs> and another operation, here's the conveyor right here for your rear cushions, right there. They're made over there, we'll zoom in. That's put together on that table right there, you can see the cushions. Let's come over here on the side here. Okay, right in there, I zoomed in a little too much. And they're put on this conveyor right here, and breast out. Okay, and they get put on with the seat in sequence according to the broadcast or the building order. Now they're put into an oven of some sort. Well, not of some sort, but of a sort, where the temperature reaches a couple hundred degrees. There's the control panel. And they come out wrinkle free. Just like that. Okay? Oh, in the back you see the spares that they have in case uh, somebody screws up and misses something which happens quite frequently. And there's the conveyor that they get put on 
Well, you can see right here, they're put on right there. There's empty hooks, and they're put on right there. They go down the line. Now, these are in sequence with the cars coming down the line, which in itself is no small trick. You see the return conveyor on the back side, another control panel, and up through the tunnel, and there you go. Don't get in the middle of this. It gets dark up there, you can't see, but previously you saw where the seats go into the car. Here's the parts that are used. They're all locked in a cage with a PC there, a uh, terminal. This is used by 842 to determine how many parts to buy for how many cars being built. There's a calendar. Let's zoom in on that. Today is November 23rd. No, 22nd. Tuesday, right there, right in the middle. 23rd, 24th, if you count, uh, till December 23rd, I think it's something like, when we come back on the 28th, it'll be 19 and a wake up. And they're closing the plant. Okay. Hard to believe, after all this time. There's the parts again. And coming around. Time clock. Bulletin board. 2838. That's the department. Kenesha News. They've been around for a long time. And something you probably won't see for a long time is the time clock. That's where they punch in and out. And there's the bulletin board, which is uh, at this time very interesting. It has to deal with uh, Mr. Moran and Mr. Uh, Stiegel. Mr. Moran, the mayor of Kenosha, and Mr. Stiegel, the president of the local 72. Uh, let's see if we can read that. Let's see. Uh, it gives a new meaning to that old slogan, a trust fund. And there's Stiegel and Moran, a couple of rats in their hole. Uh, this is strictly uh, betrayed. This is strictly uh, the uh, attitudes of the uh, workers. And this is nothing personal. I'm just showing it to you as a point of interest. This is how strongly the people feel around here. Stiegel approves Stiegel vows to guard fun. UAW denies favoritism and center hiring. It has to do with uh, all of the uh, wives being hired instead of those that put in an application. Again, and Mr. Moran and Mr. Stiegel. Uh, from a personal point of view, I believe it's a bit ironic, but it's the personal opinion. And there you go, you see the time on the clock is now 9.40 on the 22nd of November, in the year of our Lord, 1988. And we'll span the cushion room again. Now we're going to take you over to what uh, most people refer to as the 105 Canteen. This is where most people stop and have their coffee, we'll get Danny turning off the lights and fade it out on that. 105 coming up. Okay, and this is it, the 105 Canteen. This is where more people have been written up for being off their job, and this is where they hang out. As you can see, it's in its normal state. It uh, closely resembles a pigsty, although I think the pigs have it better. Right here. Let's shut it off and we'll be back on in just a second. You are.
Hope you enjoyed it. Got one, got one more little stop to make, and uh, they were running production, and we had the other part of the building before we couldn't get over there. Put it built. We're going to hit the rolling mill. That's where the whole thing, other than the freshman, takes place. That's where it starts. This is where they take some pieces here and there, and they make a side, new side, we call it.
station, which we won't discuss her right now. She has a military background and she's very... We may have a vehicle. Over here is the audit area. It's not lit now, but this is where the production foreman has to come down and look at the car and every operation that is done in their section and sign it off. If for some reason it's messed up, then they get the merits and they get letters in their jacket and all kinds of neat little things about them. Almost dead? Now we'll walk it. There is going to the crossover in the basement. Down that hallway right there is where these suits have their offices, Mr. Sager and uh, Wagamuth and the boys. And uh, that'll lead you into building 175 again, the main on the Fifth Avenue out there, where uh, the reason we're closing is because of the people that pass through those doors, their uh, intelligent decisions and, and so on, which we won't get into right now. It'll probably cost me my job. But it's going through anyway. Anyway, we'll fade out and we'll come back in on the mill. This is the door that we've passed through several times. Coming in at 138. This is the main time clock for most of my people. 99% uh, of them. Their cards are over there now because they're not here. That's uh, Danny's time clock. Let's zoom in on that. Here, hold it right there. And get it clear. Okay. That's what they look like, folks. With my signature on there, put her hours. Okay. People punch in there. Put their time clock on this side. Punch out, put it back on that side. At least that's the way it's supposed to be done. Many of them don't do it that way. Again, the, uh, the literature on Mr. Moran and Mr. Siegel, plus uh, uh, other union officials. That's the door we just came through. Danny again, and over here we have, this is the workshop for my millwrights and welders. Uh, they dress it up as much as they can. You can see a little bouquet right there. They do have a sense of humor. A little art over yes. there. A little art, artistry. Where's that? Right over there on a shield. Oh yes, there's uh, modern art. That's I believe that's called modern art. Somebody got sick. Yes. Okay. And your wire welders and your tanks. And around there's your tin shop, and up here's your carpenter shop. And these are the boxes that will be going to Jefferson Avenue with our material in them. Up there in the corner is uh, the construction office. That's where I hang out. I haven't had an office since I've been here. I just kind of float around. Don't let them kid you. That's my office. I let them use it once in a while. There you go. That's it. That's it. Okay, we're going to fade out and come back in in the mill. Wait a minute, there's one guy, see if this, is that Harry over there? This guy worked for me in production. And he's one hell of an old man. No, that's not, there he is. There's Harry. Harry's got more money than you and I will ever see. He's 50-something uh, years old. And he used to put front seats in for me with, uh, there was four people that did it. They did every other car. I remember him. And Harry did the job the best. He was the oldest man and the best worker that I've had in a long time. Harry, wait! What's up? Wait a minute. Taking your picture, Harry. Hi! Let's get a close up here. What's your mess? What's with the Williamski here? <laughs> now take a little picture, Harry. Well, I'm taking your picture. I'm nice. <laughs> Harry's about ready to retire. Yep, we're talking. And he's going to get out of here. <laughs> Harry's paid his dues. He's an 842 now. He's got a good job. Yeah, job he should have had a long time ago. Job. Say good night, Harry. Okay, goodbye. I see you. Gonna <laughs> fade out on you. This is it. This is the maintenance office in the mill. And the production on the other side. Okay. Now you have to know Weimers to appreciate this, but it says through these portholes past the best Weimers in Christ. I'll explain to you what a Weimer is at a later time in the world. Now, to try to grasp the, the grandeur and the spectacular of, the spectacularness of all of this, this used to be pigeon ship. Complete pigeon ship. This is where we stored everything from Milwaukee. 
This is all put together by maintenance. This is all resistance welding. These are the underbodies. Uh, pumps. There was no lighting, no heat. No, there was nothing out here no but air. shell. There was no air, no lighting, no heat, no water, no nothing. It was all put in by us, the maintenance people. See all these panels, these electrical panels? These are all the little parts that you saw before that go into making up the car. These parts get welded together out here. All these little ones. This is what make up the floor pan and the uh, sides, body sides, and all the construction of the car. This is what they call unit construction. All of these pieces get put together. Right here is the start of it. This is the end of it, this is the end of the mill. We're looking east, and now it would be south. Now we're moving to the east, or west, I mean. These are all the machines. If you can capture this, I can't possibly, without a wide-angle lens, show you the complete setup. While you're sitting in the car, you're sitting in the car, and you take your foot and kick it over to the side. That's, that's what, what you hit. Kicking, right there. That's what you're kicking, right there. Okay, let's take this around. This is all operated by electrical, air, and water. There's some Graco pumps. Those are sealer pumps and glue pumps. We're now on the south wall. Big notice of the beautiful yellow lines on the floor. Yes, that was done probably by Mr. Danny. Yours too, they put them in. Long time ago, they haven't been redone since. Here they are. Here's the presses I was telling you about. Now when these things run, these pieces come into this press. They're set in there on locating pins. The press comes down and up, and they're welded together, piece by piece. As you go along, you'll see each piece gets larger and larger. They're put in there by operators, and most of it's all automatic. Those are all the control panels up on top. There are a billion, billion things that could go wrong with this, and it's kept running by maintenance. I keep stressing maintenance, but the production people have a lot to do with it. Now here's your, your shell of an underbody which gets put on the line right there. You hoist it on the line. And all of this gets put on here with the front end. And it goes through the resistance welders. Now this is what I ran over in uh, 201. Went for the uh, Encore and the Alliance. It's all been retooled. And that's the light that goes down. This is the storage area, the ones that are all put together. We try to keep that full. First, it usually empties it for us. You're walking along. You can grasp this. It's a huge operation. Of course, there are there are larger. But here's a test area where an underbody that's been welded is put down and is checked by a quality control man, where he breaks actually breaks the welds and. The uh, welds must pull metal on each side, otherwise they will uh, find out. Each weld has a number. They will number that weld and go back and see why that gun isn't firing. And here comes one of our finest security guards. Walking through, making sure everything is okay. Say hi, finest security guard. What's up? <laughs> uh, that's it, huh? Yeah. You're immortalized and that's all you got to say. That's all I got to say. <laughs> There we go. Camera. There we go. <laughs> Chrysler's finest. Okay. Now, at the end of the operation, again, there's more pieces put together. This is the engine compartment. And your, uh, the, oh, these are the side panels here. Right here. It's all put together. You can understand the capacity. This is the rear quarter right here. These are rear quarter panels. They will understand the rear quarter panels if they see it. There, well, you see right there, look right there, that is the gas tank opening. So that's uh, what they call a rear quarter panel, and that would be the uh, right hand side. We do have the same operation for both sides of the car, a separate operation, I should say, for both sides of the car. This is the machinery, vast as it is, the conveyor system that brings it all around. 
These are gravity conveyors where the people unload or take the parts off the bottom here. They're loaded from this side. They take them off here. In our canteen with Mr. Clifton, Mr. Phil, Dave. Dave. Mr. Sanchez over there. Yeah, we got him too. Where's Mr. Sanchez? Way over here on the right. Uh -huh. doing what I did best. The word around here is that as long as maintenance is sitting down, we're making money. When these skilled, highly tuned oh. tradesmen... And we're making so much money now, it's killing us. ...are sitting we're down, anyway. we know we're making money. When you don't see these people sitting down, we're losing money because the line is down. How's that sound? Well, look at it this way. I ain't messing nothing up my here. It's almost 10:15. Uh, <laughs> In the canteen, it's almost time to go home. We spent the evening doing this tape. Say good night, Mr. Clifton. That's Mr. Gatorade. <laughs> Mr. Clifton was with me on the RWCs over in 201, which we just saw. Canteen area. Yeah. I say it was the good old days. The good old days. What's the flashing light in the case? But you know, it's it's uh, important. It could be. Okay, again, the machinery. It puts this together. All these are all tiny pieces. You can see there's the body sides there. Going down a conveyor. Now these to the right unit side and the other side's the left unit. Two lines just like just this. left to left. Let me focus in here one time. This is what they call a resistance welder. There are hundreds of welds through this whole system. I could get, like I said again, pressure from air, water, and electrical. Very complex. And I'm sure by the time in 20 years they will come up with an easier system. There's a the conveyor that takes it over to Toy Tab, where we were over by the Gilman. And, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. This part of the tape is over. We're going to focus out now on our security guard. Say good night, security guard. Good night, security guard. Good night, now. Take care. As we're saying good night, that's the moon, and that's either Venus or Mars. I forget which one it uh, shows in uh, the autumn or in the almost winter. It's one of the two. Summer, I think, is Venus, and I think that's Mars. So we'll fade out, say good night. Good night. Hope you like this tape as much as we did making it. It's not over with yet, though. Next time, maybe we'll be up in chassis. And I got to be getting a sore neck, so I got to close this out. Professor Hobbs, I'm, uh, I'm Joey Callahan. I used to work on your car all the time. What are you doing in here, Joey? Um, well, we we came over to...
of the Voyager satellite. Where did you get this? Where did you get it? Well, probably somewhere in the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> that's pretty close. Invaded by Alf Puppets. Please help. Hey, I'm hungry. Just two ninety nine and a flame broil whopper gets another Alf at his right. Out of our place and into yours. When we do it like you, you do it at Burger King. Why do you take aspirin more than once a week? Because after one day of tennis, I can have three days of aches and pains. And when you take aspirin that often, you wonder about aspirin stomach upset. Well, now there's a new and better aspirin product for you. Try buffered bufferin, better than plain aspirin, because it's 100% aspirin plus three buffers to help protect against stomach upset aspirin can cause. You know, it really is better. New Try buffered bufferin, if you take aspirin more than once a week. Faithfully, Honda has been number one in customer satisfaction, number one in import owner loyalty, number one for the money. Introducing New Faithful, the new Honda Civic Hatchback, one of the lowest priced wonders in America. You can count on it. Make the moments sparkle with those magic moments when it all begins. Wednesday. I am still new on this job, and I've got to prove myself constantly, and that's not easy either. TV news is a man's world. Well, in that case, you want to borrow my boxer shorts? Growing things. Then... Call me friend, okay, Charlie? Okay. Welcome to Parents' Day. Did I tell you this class was fun? <laughs> Head of the class at Huberman's Faster Than a Speeding Bullet. I'm from...